Hello, this is Lukash from uh, Foreman Core team, and in this short video, I would like to uh, present uh, my, you know, journey uh, and lesson learns from integrating a an app I was uh, the Foreman uh, with Performance Copilot. Um, so I work at Red Hat uh, in Red Hat Satellite team and uh, also the, the Foreman core team member, which is now 10 years old um, open source project. Uh, it's 2019 and we'll be celebrating this uh, in the summer. And if you don't know, Foreman is a software for uh, server management. It has a lot of features. Uh, it is a Ruby on Rails application and we occasionally have performance bugs. And so I've decided to, as my pet project, to um, gather some telemetry data from the Ruby on Rails application and expose this uh, via Prometheus API and via Performance Copilot. Or I've integrated this uh, with uh, Prometheus and Performance Copilot. So users have a chance to decide what they want to do. Uh, but internally in Red Hat, we, we are very interested in PCP because that is what it ships with Red Hat. So a couple of slides about Performance Copilot itself. So in my words, it, it is a different monitoring software. So traditionally, you have some nodes uh, or node you are about to monitor and then the software itself. And then you have some kind of database. So either some monitoring software uses a relation database, most of the, them uses, use um, other databases like Influx or RRD or um, others. And this creates, um, you know, um, um, a bound. It's 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 uh, monitoring and uh, software and database are tightly coupled, which is a problem because if you, for example, don't have any monitoring set and you are suffering from performance issues, and uh, we as a community developers uh, ask you in the, in the on the mailing list to gather some uh, performance data. Usually there is, uh, you can do ad hoc, uh, things like PS and Unix tools, or you can use monitoring software, but we don't want to ask you to install Prometheus or Nagios or something big, because that's a lot of work. Now, PCP is different. It's actually a very small monitoring daemon. It's very lightweight. And if you opt in, it can create a daily archive files with the recorded data with, with the recorded uh, metrics and um, um, this is very useful because then you can send the, the archives over to uh, to us and we can investigate so in other words uh, PCP is an open source framework uh, or specifically toolkit for monitoring and analyzing live and historical performance data so as I've said, it's very lightweight. Uh, it's just the PCP or RPM is about four megabytes. Um, it's also distributed. You can uh, um, opt in uh, to remote monitoring if you want. You can create a lot of various setups, you know, a central place to gather all the data, or you can have run and store uh, archives on each individual server. It's also included in major Linux distributions and with What's very important, it is part of base Red Enterprise Linux or CentOS and clones uh, by default. And it's it's there. Uh, you don't need to uh, install additional repositories like EPO. It's part of CentOS. So that's very, very good. And for Red Hat customers, it is full su fully supported solution. And it's a Unix tool. It runs on BSDs and other Unixes uh, as well. So if you're not into Linux, take a look on PCP. Uh, the key thing is that no external database is needed. Uh, that's one of the major feature for us. So it allows us to reach out to users and customers and gather the data. Uh, also, one of the unique features is that metrics are also stored with some metadata that includes type, which is obvious, but also unit and semantic, which kind of, if you use native PCP tools to you know, analyze the data, um, for example, some you know diagrams or um, pictures, and, um, it will correctly show you the units, which is very important. I've seen uh, countless times a lot of graphs with uh, you know millions of 
um, some numbers and I was really not aware if they, these are kilobytes, megabytes or whatever. This is fully transparent and automatic as long as you correctly set the metric units and semantics which is usually users don't do this, developers do. Um, and it works very well for with both live and historical data. And live is very interesting uh, because um, the PCP uh, is 20 years plus history, and its its roots is in SGI uh, company, which is still uh, doing HPC, uh, high performance computing, and um, PCB can be set to very high resolution uh, um, um, gathering of data as short as one second, which is fairly, fairly good. Um, by the way, uh, one of the major users of the community version of PCP is Netflix. Uh, apparently they have uh, a lot of servers, I guess, and a lot of performance data. Um, one nice feature is hot, hot proc monitoring as well, uh, so we can pick hot pick or cherry pick processes which we want to monitor in more detail and you can also um, select which of these metrics go into the uh, archives. You can still use the archive files and keep them and use them to draw um, graphs and stuff and you know, use the utilities. But if you want, you can integrate with third parties like Graphite, Influx, Elasticsearch, Zabbix, Nagios. There are plenty of, I would say, these five are the major plugins available in the PCP by default. So we can send the data over to a different third party. And one of the interesting um, parts of PCP are command line um, tools. It comes with a lot of, you know, two dozens of mm, command line client, you know, utilities or uh, program programs which you can use to do the uh, analysis either on site uh, if you have SSH uh, connection to uh, a server, or if you have um, archives, we can use those tools as well. Most of these tools will live work live, either locally or remotely, or they do work with archive files as well. Um, the PCP comes with a um, graphical user interface. Um, it's written in Qt and it works in Linux and should work in Mac OS um, as well. I don't think it works uh, in Windows. Um, but then there's a couple of text user interface uh, utilities I'll show later. Um, and then PCP doesn't have its own web uh, dashboard, but it comes with uh, two d dashboards, um, third-party dashboards. And one of them is actually native, written by Netflix, called Vexor. And then, of course, it's uh, monitoring uh, demons. So you have a lot of agents uh, over 100, and it's very extensible. And there's a good doc documentation as well. So the heart of uh, PCP is PMCD, which stands for Collecting Daemon, um, and it spawns uh, some agents, which are sub-processes of PMCD, uh, often called, or they are called PMDAs. Um, some of the PMCD can also um, uh, have have embedded uh, embedded PMDAs. These are uh, compiled in. Uh, as shared libraries, but most of the PMDAs are uh, sub-processes. And then you have a couple of consumers. Those are the common line utilities or GUI utilities. PM chart is uh, the Qt application. PM stat, PM logger is an, uh, a daemon that you can opt in. And if you run it, it will, s according to its configuration, it will create those archives. And the same consumers can also consume from the archive files as well. Writing PMDA agent is um, simple. Uh, you can write those in C, C++, Python, Perl, and a couple of others languages. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. You have a callback, and and then there's some kind of a initialization phase. Um, the most complicated thing is the add metric uh, method, which is a little bit more complex. Because 
because you need to uh, add semantics and uh, and units uh, and um, and some te text description. So it's a little bit longer, but but then uh, everything else is pretty much straightforward. Uh, this is a screenshot of a PCP um, chart or PM chart. As you can see, it's it's uh, it, it does the job. You can easily correlate the uh, correlate um, data and um, it also loads uh, archives and in those archives you can go back in time there is a, there is this um, play pause um, buttons um, below you can uh, it's this is really useful the user interface is a little bit clunky sometimes something is not redrawn but overall it works great uh, now if you want to use PCP for uh, monitoring uh, for you know um, operations monitoring you can you can either install PCP web app Grafana or Vector those two web applications are available um, there's one more I guess but not sure if that's in Fedora and you need to install a PM a PCP web API package which this command is from Fedora and Red Hat obviously but the, you do the same for Debian and PM WebD is the daemon you need to turn on um, and start. And by default, it has 44323 TCP port. And PM WebD is basically a lightweight web server, which includes those two JavaScript uh, JavaScript uh, libraries or JavaScript uh, web applications. So Grafana, is, if you're uh, familiar uh, with Grafana, you'll, it's, it works as expected. Now the major difference is that the uh, pm pm uh, webd actually emulates the grafana api so grafana talks to pm uh, webd uh, thinking that it is a native grafana api but it's actually emulated um, api and what it does it work with archive so it actually reaches out to archive files and um, getting up or getting uh, back the, with the data and so you can do pretty much historical uh, analysis or historical dashboard you know a weeks months back uh, it looks pretty quick quickly and uh, works great it doesn't show you live data so th this data appear a little bit later after like a one two minute lags uh, what lag minutes lag because that's how PM logger, you know, stores the, the data in in log files. If you want the live data, there's this vector application, the second one, which is exactly the opposite. It only shows you live data, so it doesn't it it talks to the PMCD, it doesn't talk to the or it, it doesn't read the archive data, and it only shows you, you know, uh, what the numbers that are real time, and of course, the JavaScript or your browser remembers some history, um, usually several minutes back, but then it's all forgotten, I guess. There's no way to store these. All right, so let's do some demo. Um, so, you know, first of all, you need to install a package, obviously. I uh, want you want to show you that, and then you need to make sure that PMCD is running. As you can see, it has a couple of uh, PMDA agents or sub processes running. Uh, that's expected. There is another command called PCP. If you you know execute it, it shows you a little bit of uh, versioning info, hardware, and also PMDAs which are enabled. Um, so we can see it's there's a root. Uh, Proc, uh, trace, effects, uh, XFS, and summary Linux. These are the uh, general ones. I've added uh, MMV state site. These are my custom ones, which you usually don't see until you enable them. So to see a you know metrics available, that is uh, there's PM info command. If, if you run it just like that, it will show you a lot of output. So we are going to grip um, some interesting uh, metrics. Uh, so, as you can see, PCP uh, uses uh, some kind of a hierarchy, so dot separated hierarchy of, of metrics. Uh, to see uh, data, for example, uh, un units and semantics of a metric, you can just do pm info d d, 
the same for f uh, or f is uh, similar shows you um, some details about um, actual actual uh, values so this is a counter so these are actual uh, values and as you can see um, metric can all uh, can have instances so in this case partitions you have several partitions uh, on your on your server um, so this is called instances instances can be refer uh, referenced by a number or via string or label um, the same goes for for example kernel or load as you can see there, there are three instances one five and fifteen minutes uh, load averages to show th this is not the tool to show values this is actually telling you or showing raw values to see values um, in a nicer way pmval is the utility you want to use you give it a mm, you give it a uh, metric name and um, and square brackets you can give it um, instances you're interested in and by default it goes every second I guess or two seconds and um, it, ne it never stops you need to cancel it so I've uh, instructed it to just give us uh, five samples and then uh, then uh, then give up so as you can see this is uh, converting to counts per second so these are disk writes so uh, there was uh, uh, um, almost 70 uh, writes per second on SDA1 on my system recently. If you know VMstat, which is a Unix tool, uh, PC pr provides PMstat, which is very similar. It has the similar interface, uh, so which is great. Uh, so this is in this way you can um, you can. Uh, monitor and uh, analyze uh, in a in a familiar way and the same goes for VM uh, sorry uh, IOSTAT so there's PM IOSTAT which works the same now what's important both of these utilities or most of the utilities use also can also work with archives so I have this uh, small archive file which I recorded um, 15th of January uh, 9 a.m. Um, uh, I just recorded a couple of minutes there and both the utilities I've shown you can load the uh, archive as well. There's a nice utility called PMLog Summary which can sh uh, calculate you some averages, minimum, maximum. So here we see that the B cache the read bytes uh, was uh, on average uh, between 9, uh, 9 a.m. and 9.15 a.m. It was uh, two megabytes per sh per uh, per second uh, on average, and maximum fourteen, fifteen megabytes. So this is PM log summary. This one, this tool only use, uh, works with uh, archive files. There is one uh, nice uh, interactive tool which is called Atop. So if you know Atop, the, there there's PCP Atop, which uh, works exactly the same. You know you have the key bindings and everything the same but it actually works uh, using a PCP so it grab, grabs data from PCP you can use it remotely and you can also which is fantastic you can use PCP with archives as well so I'm giving it an archive from uh, 15th of January uh, 2019 a uh, 9 uh, 9 uh, a.m. in the morning and this is showing actually you know as you can see the time uh, on the first line 905 Zero five ten, so by default it's uh, PM logger logs ten seconds intervals. As you can see, you don't see uh, process data um, because by default there would be a lot of data. Uh, I would uh, increase the size of uh, archive files a lot, but you can opt in easily if you want to gather those. And uh, you can use a uh, hot proc. Uh, agent which is um, um, a nice uh, little thing that allows you to specify processes um, you can use process name or uh, arguments stuff like that you can use regular expressions you can also s specify all the processes that is con some uh, con some uh, th that is using a CPU a lot or uh, writing to disk you want them to appear and then if you do that um, actually this will around because I'm not root on this system uh, so I don't have permissions to 
store this value. Usually do this via configuration file, but you can opt in, um, in using PMS store, which is uh, a utility to store values in the, um, in the PCP. And that would allow you to gather also information from, uh, from processes. So the ATO would look pretty much the same as, uh, as uh, you know, you would expect. So th that's super nice. And then if you know SAR utility, there is a PCP ATOP SAR, uh, which is, uh, you know, again, the same uh, experience, but, um, but uh, it is using PCP uh, data. So I'm going to cancel that. That's pretty much it. And let's talk about a little bit of uh, Ruby. So basically my task my goal was a ruby on rails application i wanted to to se to send the data over to pcp so there are a couple of options i could use and i actually tried all the three so um first idea was write an agent sure that's that's the best approach uh, there's a pm api uh, for that the documentation lib pmda and cc plus plus python perl or java uh, but there is no Ruby binding. So I was thinking like writing Ruby binding, but it turns out to be a lot of effort. Um, then there was an, an option to use a different API, MMV, so that's memory mapped values. And then I found tracing uh, agent, which is a small little uh, you know, agent. If you enable it, you can use a PM tra trace command that this is primarily focus on shell scripts or you know cron jobs you can just you know send data over to pcp from shell there's also a C, C++ api so I was thinking like this is the this is the uh, integration po point for me so I, i've created a small uh, ruby gem called pcp trace and uh, if you want to test it out you just need to install pcp devil on uh, development tools because you know that's how gem ruby gems work and it you know it's pretty easy you just require pcp trace and, and there are you know the interface is very very s simple so there's there's a if you reach a point there's a point call if you want to observe a value and there's obs obs if you want to increment or decrement counter that's counter and then this um, transaction or block uh, for ruby i've created also a block version of the or the begin pcp begin and end. it also uh, accepts a block announced that the software was excited you know it was like a few hours of work since it's like five functions right um, the thing is and when I announced that on a PC mailing list they the devs told me that you know the aggregating is not very flexible it's using fixed rolling window I knew that already actually um, but <clears throat> I realized that this is not really a good fit for multi-process environment because and Ruby on Rails, um, you know, or Ruby, um, still um, in the situation with threads and is not very good. Ruby three might solve that, but for for now, the typical deployment strategy for Ruby on Rails application or Ruby application in general is to have multiple processes, so multiple multiple workers. And also, they've told me that the, this API is very slow and they're going to depreciate it. Cool, so I'm scratching that. Uh, so, and I was thinking like, hey, let's try uh, other thing. Um, MMV stands for memory map value. It's just a shared memory and there's a MMV a library, which you can use from C, C++ and a couple of other um, languages. And this is meant for instrumenting applications. So it's basically for um, telemetry or instrumentation data, which is good fit, I, I thought. Uh, of course, there was no wrapper for Ruby. Uh, writing one would be pretty complicated, although there was an attempt, there was a working progress Ruby library, uh, which actually natively um, was doing the memory mapping natively, but it needed a MM jab, MM gem. Sorry, MMAP gem, MMAP memory map gem. 
because Ruby itself don't do a memory mapping itself by default. But still, there was concern with multiprocess environment, so I figured out and created a daemon. Um, and my idea was to use something very simple, uh, statsd as a de facto standard text-based UDP protocol. It's very easy, you just send out a, a one line or multiple lines per UDP packet, and it just the format is very sim similar to PCP, you just have a metric name, dot separated metric, and then colon, not the number actually, and slash, so, uh, sorry, well, that's the uh, pipe, um, and then the type, which is, by default, it supports three uh, three um, types, that is counter, duration, and gauge. Uh, so MS milli stands for milliseconds. Uh, so this is pretty much very simple protocol. There are a couple of extensions and a couple of implementations, and it's it's a good fit for Ruby because we want to get the measurements out of the Ruby processes as soon as possible. As uh, we often, if you have a performance bugs and and loaded um, deployments, you you don't really want to do a complex aggregation in Ruby code. So we wrote up PCP MAV statsd, uh, not a fancy name, but it works. I've decided to uh, use a speed library, which is a very nice um, Google Summer 2015, 2016, I guess, I'm not sure, uh, library, which is for Go. Um, and when I saw it, I was like, uh, this is exactly what I need. And it was so easy to and fun to, to write. So I, I've completed the, the daemon in one or two days. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's, it listens to UDP packets. And there is also embedded HDR histogram aggregator in in the library, so I had to do nothing. It just it just works, and it sends the data to MMV. So and, and it works. We had to fix a couple of bugs because you know our telemetry data creates a lot, like several hundreds of uh, metrics, and there were some issues with that. Um, and I had to work around uh, it via creating a multiple MMV files, uh, but it works, and that's how you integrate Foreman with PCP today. You run this daemon, and you you set up Foreman to um, send out a UDP statsd uh, telemetry data, which uh, to localhost obviously, uh, and PCP and statsd hands this over to PCP. So I was really happy. Announced that, told PCP devs I wrote this. Of course they would prefer writing a typical or, or proper PMDA, I agree. And MMV was not meant to write demons, it was meant for to instrumenting, to do instrumentation. And I knew that, but you know, I just wanted something uh, in a two, two days time frame. And I thought uh, this would be a temporary solution. So writing an engine is really imminent, right? Uh, so I have some good news to share, actually. Mm, there's a student uh, at Polish University in Olomouc um, f uh, who applied writing a proper PMDA as a diploma work. Mm, so this will be a proper PMDA, that's the agent. Uh, it will be written in C++ or C, multi-threaded, high-performance. Uh, pluggable uh, architecture, so parsers, you know, the, you need to parse the UDP packet, so parsers would be um, pluggable. Um, uh, so there are a couple of uh, things, or a couple of parsers, you can do a naive uh, manual writer approach, uh, sorry, parser approach, or maybe use use um, wax or, um, I mean, um, YAS or uh, Ragel. There are a couple of parsers available, right? Aggregation would be also uh, pluggable, which uh, the um, HDR histogram uh, as an option, and improvements in many areas like label ma proper label mapping, which is also good. Uh, um, you know, la mapping labels to instances, and fully co configurable and um, this will be an option for all the unsupported languages, stacks, frameworks, runtimes uh, that 
don't have a nice way of um, compiling a, a code or wrapping code around the native libraries and it will be also a nice replacement for the appreciated uh, trace API because sending a UDP packet is very simple uh, you can do this with netcat from shell so you could use this for shell so yeah well, numbers are good in talks I guess so I thought one would be good uh, candidate so that's a one lesson uh, learned for me that evolution is still better than revolution because um, I learned a lot of things along the way and that's it thanks for uh, thanks for watching <laughs>